Oh, there he is. God, I saw him. Look at him. You can see him on live right there. God, dog. That was so awesome. I, uh, <laughs> not a big one, but man, you know, we're, we're out here at Lake St. Clair and uh, we're just kind of getting started. It's summertime out here and, you know, Lake St. Clair is just a big flat and it's got a lot of grass, a lot of different uh, cover for them, but it's pretty featureless. There's not a lot of depth change. We'll let him go. Biggest thing in a lot of northern lakes is looking for bottom composition changes. And the only way to really do that or to find that is to, to fish it and, and see it and graph it. This particular area, it's got a lot of grass clumps with sand in between and it just, it shows up exceptionally well on the Mega 360. It's probably my most valuable tool for finding bottom composition changes up here in the Great Lakes. You know, I've fished my whole life all over, you know, the Great Lakes, you know, Michigan and New York, all the storied fisheries. And it seems like wherever you can find those transitions, uh, that's, that's really what you want to look for. You know, having good electronics or having the best electronics makes that really easy to stand out. And, you know, I've learned this over time just by physically seeing it with my eyes in this super clear water. But once you've seen it with your eyes, then you know what it looks like on your electronic. One of the big things out here is the forage base. And you know, in the summer, it's always changing, <clears throat> you know, what they're focused on. I mean, they're, they're not picky. They're gonna go for whatever is the most prolific forage in the area. And out here, I, I think perch is real key. And then anywhere there's rock on the bottom, you know, smallmouth are gonna be focused on gobies. If you're a Great Lake smallmouth fisherman, those are, things that you, you've got to understand the forage base in each of the systems and, and what they're, they're focused on at, at that particular time of year. So understanding the, the life cycle of their forage is just as important as understanding, you know, the seasonal patterns of a smallmouth. Like right now, with, with these conditions being overcast and that, I'm throwing just a, a sugar daddy color. Uh, it's a real natural perch looking. It's got a lot of yellow on it. Because again, in these cloudy conditions, having something that's a little bit brighter, a little more visible, but still natural is, is gonna be important. You can always slow down and throw something finessey to catch them, but to find them initially, you wanna have something that's, that's gonna give you the biggest search distance possible. And I want something that's visible yet natural for, for that day's light conditions and water clarity. So, I mean, you can see from the map here, um, I, I just marked one waypoint when I caught the first fish. And we've kind of made a drift through here, but on the Lake Master, that's how gradual the contour is here at Lake St. Clair. So what I'm gonna do now is just make another little pass out, say a quarter mile or something. You know, I'm gonna look just to see if I can uh, see a little bottom composition change or anything like that. What I try to do is just keep moving through different areas and, and let the fish tell you what they're looking for, because it does change a lot. So I just made a little move out, uh, a, probably a half a mile further out. You know, compared to that area we first were in, you can see there's just that subtle, real short, short, short grass. I mean, it's typically an inch or two tall and, and it'll be patchy, you know, where, where it's a, a solid carpet, it's, it's not seems to be as good as places where there's a lot of hard spots and sand and gravel in between. And, and you can see that here, you know, that's why I've got so many waypoints out here. Cause when you, when you find them like that, a lot of times it's something they'll come back to year, year after year. It's uh, all part of the puzzle out here. And it's one of the things I love about this lake is it, it's never the same twice. Oh, I see one right now in front of me. Look at see him, he's right underneath it, he's coming. Come on. God, he followed it. Drop drop shot down to him. You always have a drop shot ready. 
here. I had him follow it all the way to the boat. Not sure exactly what it was. It didn't look that big. It could have been a could have been a big, you know, a perch or something like that. But usually those smallmouth will they start to come, they're they're gonna get it. But we'll keep that drop shot handy. Mega Live has just changed the way that we fish. You know, I mean, for years, we just would go out here and all you do is drift with the wind, you know, set the trolling motor on a constant speed if you have to, to try to cover water, you know, to compensate for current. Just trying to run into them. Now with Mega 360 and Mega Live, it's just made it so much more efficient. You know, I mean, I'm watching my jerk bait as it's coming in and I can see if something's following it or you can just scan around, you know? So it's, it's just so much, made us so much more efficient because out here, you know, it's, it's giant. This is the biggest playing field that you could probably ever be on. I mean, this whole lake is 20 foot deep or less and they can literally be anywhere out here. So it's like finding needles in hay fields, you know, it's, it's sometimes it takes a while to run into them, but if you keep covering water and you're paying attention to your electronics, they're gonna clue you in. Oh, I see one, he's on it, he's on it, got it. That one's great. spot lock <laughs> that was so awesome I mean not a giant or anything like that but uh, just to see it all go down like that you're not a not a big one but man that was so cool to watch and he really wanted it I mean I saw him coming behind it on the mega live and I mean you just saw the two the two the jerk bait in that connect and Felt the bite. See you, buddy. Two bites back to back like that is pretty good deal. You know, in the tournament situation, there's a lot of times, you know, I mean, I would just spot lock and just hold right there and throw a pitch a drop shot all around the boat, scan all around with Mega Live. But right now I'm kind of, I'm just, there's another one. I'm just in search mode. Not a big one, but we better spot lock here for a minute. I mean, I've hardly made three or four casts and we're running into them left and right. So, so none of these are, you know, Lake St. Clair giants by any means, but they're all solid fish. And when you're looking for the big ones, it's one place that they definitely mix together. You know, I had three bites real fast right there. So in that last one, I just hit spot lock. And I mean, talk about a, a feature that has changed the world of bass fishing. Just let the trolling motor do the work and pick a little area apart. Oh God, there he is. You get in the area where they're at and it doesn't take them long to show themselves. Feels like a little better one. He crushed it. I love a jerk bait because it just is so efficient at making these smallmouth react. They love, they just love that start and stop action. And you know, with a jerk bait, I, I do an awful lot of that, but I do the same thing out here cranking too. Yeah, he just hooked a little bit weird, but a nice one, it's solid fish. I mean, he just pounded it too. You can see that, I mean, you've got all three hooks. For these smallies, they're, they're, they pull so hard, you've gotta have, you know, super strong hooks. These, I put just number four KVD, they're extra short, extra strongs, and they just don't flex or anything like that. So good for jerk baits and crank baits. You know, I've spent a lot of time jerk baiting, and uh, you know, I've worked with Luz to develop my own signature series of rods. My favorite that I use most of the time 
is the GC2. You know, it's a 610, it's a medium heavy action. It's got a lot of backbone, but it has a good bit of tip to it. So when you're snapping that bait, you know, that tip's gonna flex. But when you get a bite way out there or you're making a real long cast, and again, you're trying to get that action, you need that beefier part of the rod down here. You know, I throw it on my um, signature series reel on a seven five to one gear ratio. I like that one. I only got to turn the handle just a little bit to pull in a lot of line. And you know, day in, day out, man, I use a ton of 12 and 14 pound fluorocarbon just for that. You know, the Bass Pro XPS is what I use, but um, you want that low stretch floor carbon when you got that bait way out there 40 50 yards away from the boat and you're popping that rod so it's a it's a full combination you know it's the bait it's the line it's the it's the reel it's the rod uh, that is the key to a great jerk bait presentation is having all that stuff working together there's a lot of fish in this area though Oh, here comes one. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. There he's coming, he's coming. God. Got him. <laughs> that was good too. That one, uh, he, he followed, it came up, followed the jerk bait, and you know, I knew right then I needed to, to slow it down, so I just stopped it, twitched it hard a couple of times, and uh, and you know, he came up and bit it, just a little guy, but same thing again, you know, when you're watching them on that Mega Live, you can see right away kind of how they're reacting to it, and it tells you to change your retrieve. And it's different if you're, you know, fishing in the winter or cold water, but the basic scenario is really important to make sure that you're jerking that bait with slack in the line. So smallmouth like a pretty aggressive snap to it, so you can see I'm really popping it hard, but I start with slack every time, snap that rod and let it recoil right back towards the lure. You know, that way that bait just really has the freedom of movement. Each time you point that rod back at it and give it that slack, it, it allows it to, to dart off to the side. So, you know, again, I'm gonna make long casts and, and just start snapping it right from the get go. And I try to, for smallies especially, I, I just try to really break it up. So I'll do one or two and then, you know, sometimes three quick snaps and then a pause and never let it sit for very long. You know, the water's warm, you know, now it's 74 degrees. Their metabolism's high. They're, they're not scared to chase fast moving stuff at all. And, uh, you know, I want a pretty aggressive retreat. When the conditions are like this, when it's cloudy and the water's real clear and, and I know I'm around fish, even if they've been pressured, man, that jerk bait is a, is a great tool. But I'm also gonna have, you know, that I'm gonna have that drop shot ready always for any followers like that. I've had a couple of them follow it that didn't, didn't want it. And you drop a drop shot down there, a lot of times they're, they're gonna, you're gonna catch that fish. Let me, I'll call you right back. Sorry, I gotta reel this fish in. I don't know what I got, but <laughs> always looking, you know, and saw one down there and just just dropped the drop shot to him and he ate it. I don't think he's real big, but there's a lot of fish in this area at least. Yep. Good solid one. Lake St. Clair is, man, it's it's my favorite place on the planet to fish. I just I think it's the greatest smallmouth fishery anywhere because from the beginning of the year till the end of the year, you can catch them. It's so big, it's so vast, and it has just unbelievable numbers and size. The grass changes, the, you know, the predominant forage or what the most available forage is can, uh, can, can vary a lot from season to season. So this is my favorite time. It's a challenge to find them, but it fits my strength. Another good solid one. 